So today's video is going to be another solved true crime case. Today we're going to be talking about the case of Georgia Williams. If you are new to my channel, today is day number two of 10 days of terror. Basically every single day up until Halloween and on Halloween, I'm going to be posting a true crime video every single day. So if that sounds like something you want to be involved in, make sure you subscribe to my channel with my notifications on so that you know when I upload. And all that being said, I just want to give my usual disclaimer that I mean absolutely no disrespect to anyone that I talk about in this video. This is all just information that I have found on the internet and I'm compiling into one video. So Georgia Williams was a 17 year old girl born on the 7th of September 1995 in Telford in Shropshire in England. She was born the younger of two siblings. Her older sister was named Scarlett, her mother was named Lynette and her father was named Steve. Georgia was a very lively outgoing girl. She made friends with everyone. She was very kind of cheeky and charming. She always played pranks on her sister. She was very fantastic orientated, she was very loving, very caring, very empathetic. She always felt for other people around her, she always wanted to try and make other people happy if they were sad and you'll see that very soon in this case. She always wanted to make everyone around her feel comfortable and happy. Georgia was bullied throughout primary school and her mother offered to call in the school and get Georgia moved classes away from her bully but Georgia, she was very strong and she said, no mum, I can handle this myself. But when Georgia went up to high school, that dynamic completely flipped on its head. She became very popular, she had a lot of friends, she was very well liked and she actually became head girl of that high school. She began training as an air cadet on the side and actually had dreams of becoming an RAF paramedic when she left school. When Georgia turned 17, she got a part-time job working at her local petrol station and she quickly made friends with all of her co-workers However, there was this one boy that always seemed to be left out of everything. And Georgia, like I said, she was very empathetic. She always wanted people to be happy. And so when she joined the petrol station, she involved him in everything and he quickly became friends with the group. This boy was 22 year old Jamie Reynolds and he quickly developed a liking for Georgia. He always used to ask her out on dates, ask her to be his girlfriend. And Georgia, in the politest way possible, used to reject him every time. Georgia would just basically friend zone him. She said that she wasn't looking for a boyfriend right now. She preferred how they were as friends. She was just very polite, very considerate. And although Jamie was upset that she didn't feel the same way about him, he respected her wishes and the two of them just carried on being friends, good friends actually. When Jamie turned 23 years old, he expressed to Georgia that he wasn't happy in his job at the petrol station. That was his full-time job and he didn't feel like he wanted to do that for the rest of his life. So Jamie and Georgia sat down and they kind of talked about like his hobbies, what he was passionate about. And then Jamie said that he was really into photography and so Georgia urged him to maybe take that up as a career and so Jamie took Georgia's advice and asked her if she would be a model for him so that he could take some photos to create like a professional portfolio of his work and Georgia said yes she wanted to help him and so they arranged for Sunday 26th of May 2013 she was going to come over a bunch of Jamie's other friends were going to come over to his parents house and they were just going to have this massive photo shoot together. Georgia actually almost didn't go last minute because her family were having a barbecue round at the house, all her grandparents were over, aunties, uncles, however Jamie only lived five minutes down the road and so she just decided to go anyway hoping it would be quite quick. So Georgia went upstairs, she did her hair, she did her makeup, she had her hair in a ponytail, she wore a leather jacket and some jeans. And the last thing her father Steve said to her when she came downstairs in this outfit ready to go to the photo shoot was that she looked beautiful and she even looked like Sandy from Greece. So then she left her house at around 7.30 and started the five minute walk to Jamie Reynolds house. Then at around half past 10 that night, so three hours later, Georgia still wasn't home. So Lynette, her mother, texted her just asking when the photo shoot was gonna end, how long she planned on being out. She then received a text back from Georgia who said that the photo shoot actually ended a while ago and she's just been out with some friends ever since and it had her usual three kisses on the end. As for what time she was coming home, Georgia just said she didn't know, she was probably gonna be out till late, so she told her parents not to bother waiting up for her. And Georgia was very sensible. She'd never kind of rebelled, she was always very well behaved, she never got herself into trouble, and so her parents trusted her. So they went to bed, but then when they woke up the next morning, Georgia still wasn't home. So Lynette texts her again that morning at around 6 a.m. just asking where she'd been, what time she plans on coming home, and she didn't receive a text back until like 7.30, 8 a.m. Georgia just basically said that she'd ended up staying over at a friend's house and forgot to text her mum letting her know. 
and her phone was actually running out of battery so if she stopped replying to text that would be why. The exact wording of that text was actually my phone battery is dying too which is very significant when you find out that it wasn't actually Georgia that was sending these texts it was someone pretending to be Georgia. So that day, it was a Monday, the day after she left the house, it was May 27th and she was actually due to be going to a music festival and so her parents when she didn't return home all day just kind of assumed that she'd gone straight there after being at this friend's house. But they were sure that she'd be back by Tuesday morning because she actually had her first ever driving lesson that morning and she was very excited to start driving. Georgia's dad Steve theorised that maybe she was just rebelling. Like I said, she'd been very sensible all her life, very kind of trustworthy, always behaved very well. She was never, she was never a rebellious teenager and so he thought maybe she's going through that right now. Ignoring her parents for a few days, going off, doing whatever she wanted, not coming home. Like, obviously he wasn't happy about it, he was worried about her, but that's what he thought could have been happening. On the Monday evening, they waited up really late for her to come home, but still there was no sign of Georgia. They were ringing her phone, but at this point it was going straight to voicemail. So either her phone had run out of battery, like that text said, or it had been switched off. Georgia's parents asked around all her friends if she was with any of them, if any of them knew anything but none of them had seen or heard from Georgia in days. And so the next morning when she didn't show up for her Tuesday morning driving lesson, her parents reported a missing to the police. So Georgia's parents told police everything they could, but all they really knew was that she was going to a photo shoot at Jamie Reynolds's house. They didn't know any of the other friends' names, they didn't know where she'd been at all. And so all police could really do was look into Jamie Reynolds because he was the only name they had. So police ran a background check on Jamie Reynolds and what they found was very concerning. In 2008, Jamie Reynolds was caught by police attempting to strangle a teenage girl and he was unbelievably only given a warning for that. He wasn't arrested for assault, he wasn't charged with anything, he wasn't even just taken into custody for a little while. He was literally just warned at the scene and let away. So immediately Jamie Reynolds was a person of interest, if not a suspect, and so they went to his house to go and speak to him. However, when they got to his house, there were no lights on, there was no car in the driveway, no one was answering the door, and so they knocked the door in. Police had a quick look around the house, but there was absolutely no sign of Jamie or Georgia. And so a manhunt began to find this boy. They checked the petrol station where both of them worked, but none of their co-workers had heard from either of them. None of them had been in for their shifts. Police called Jamie's parents, who he lived with, but they were actually on holiday at the time. And they gave police the registration of the van that was now missing that he was probably driving and so the search for this van started police in shropshire informed police all over the uk of this registration plate and this model of van because by now this was two days after georgia went missing he could be anywhere at this point and he was he was 280 miles away in a different country in Glasgow in Scotland. Jamie was found in a cheap hotel in Glasgow and so Glasgow police arrested him yet there was no sign of Georgia with him. All Glasgow police could ask him since it wasn't their case to deal with, it was Shropshire police's case to be dealing with, all they could ask him was where is Georgia and he just said I don't know. So as Jamie was being transported back down to Shropshire for questioning, police went and told Georgia's family that it probably wasn't looking good. Her mother Lynette was screaming, crying, collapsed on the floor, her father Steve threw up, her sister Scarlett cancelled all of her plans for the next week, everyone was just in bits. Meanwhile police did a proper search of Jamie Reynolds house now that he was a suspect and they actually found a camera with an SD card inside but all of the files had been deleted. So police took the SD card back to the police station and recovered all of these files and what they found were pictures of Georgia Williams before, during and after her murder. There were normal photos of Georgia just like a photo shoot like Jamie had lured her there for and then there were photos of Georgia naked and she was clearly distressed at this point. Then there were pictures of Georgia with a rope around her neck and then there were pictures of her hanging. Jamie then took Georgia's body down and took pictures of her in every single position imaginable. There were hundreds and he was moving the body around to different rooms while taking these pictures. Jamie then had sex with her dead body several times and photographed that too. Police continued to search Jamie's home and his computer history and they actually found 60 16,800 images and 72 videos of extreme pornography. And when I say extreme, I mean fetishes of rape, snuff films where people are murdered, 
torture, just very violent things. At this point, Jamie's parents had flown back over to England early so that they could be questioned by police too. And they actually told police that Jamie had been watching these things, these very extreme pornographic films, since he was 14 years old. Or at least that's when they caught him. He could have been watching them way before that. And Jamie's parents did what they could to stop him from accessing these websites. He needed his laptop and things for school so they couldn't confiscate them. Instead, they rang up their Wi-Fi provider and got blocks put on all of these websites so he couldn't access these things anymore. But Jamie Reynolds, at the age of 14, called up and paid for his own private Wi-Fi provider that his parents had no idea about so that he could use that one without the blocks on it. So Jamie was paying for his own Wi-Fi every month and his parents had no idea. And he'd been doing this for nearly 10 years at this point. Meanwhile, Jamie's parents were thinking that he'd stopped watching all these things nearly a decade ago because they'd blocked them all but he'd actually been watching them the whole time. His parents actually informed police and social services at the time that they found out that he was watching them because they were concerned. However, because it wasn't really illegal for him to view those things, no action was taken. Even though it was a very kind of worrying hobby of his, they couldn't really do anything. On a further search of the house, police found notepads with 40 stories that Jamie had written all about raping, torturing and killing women. There was even one story named Georgia Williams in Surprise, which is the exact story of what he did to Georgia. And it's believed that he actually wrote this story before he did these things to Georgia, almost like a plan. He'd also drawn pictures of women being strangled, hung, asphyxiated. He'd even printed out pictures of real women that he knew in his life and defaced those with the same things. Meanwhile, during his questioning, Jamie was maintaining his innocence although police knew he was guilty and so they charged him with George's murder. So now police had to actually locate George's body. However, like I said, Jamie was maintaining his innocence so he wasn't giving anything up. He was so cold and emotionless all the way throughout this. He really did not care what he'd done to Georgia. He didn't care what he was doing to her family, the pain that he was putting them through. And so because he wouldn't give anything up, police began tracing Jamie's steps on the Monday morning after he'd killed Georgia. He was caught on CCTV at the local petrol station filling up his van and George's body was actually in the back of that van. He then drove 60 miles to Wrexham where he parked in a cinema car park, left George's body in the van in the car park and went inside and watched a movie. And like I said earlier, Jamie always used to be asking Georgia to be his girlfriend, to go out on dates, specifically dates to the cinema. And one of his last attempts at asking her on a date was actually to go and see the new Fast and Furious film that had come out at the time. And as she did with all of his advances, she politely declined it. And so after killing her, Jamie made sure that he got that date even if it meant taking her dead body and leaving her in the car park while he went and watched the film. After the trip to the cinema, police lost Jamie's van on CCTV footage and so a public appeal was put out for anyone to come forward if they'd seen that van anywhere between Wrexham and Scotland. And unbelievably, it actually worked. Several people came forward to see that they'd seen Jamie and this van on a mountain pass in North Wales. And this mountain path had like woods around it and things. It was very muddy. And Jamie's van had actually gotten stuck and several people came out to help him and that's how they all recognised him because they spent quite a bit of face-to-face -face time with him. And so police kind of put two and two together. Jamie had a dead body in the back of his van. What use would he have been at a woods other than to dump this body? And so a full search was carried out on this mountain pass, all the wooded areas around it. And sure enough, police found the naked body of Georgia Williams. So Georgia's body was recovered. It was brought back to Shropshire and Steve, her father, physically would not let any other member of the family other than Lynette, George's mother, to look at George's body. He said that it was way too painful for him. You can tell in interviews how scarred he was from seeing his daughter like that. And he said that he didn't want that for any of his other family members. Georgia wouldn't want that for any of her family members. He said that he wanted them to remember Georgia as she was in her life, not as she was in death. So Jamie Reynolds, like I said, maintained his innocence this whole time. He had nothing to do with Georgia's murder. That was until the first day of his trial when he stood up and pled guilty. So there was no need for a trial or anything. Jamie Reynolds had just stood up there and confessed to killing and taking all those pictures of George Williams. The judge described Jamie Reynolds as a potential serial killer and so he gave him a whole life tariff because he was a clear dangerous person. If he was ever let out of prison again, 
he would do this again. At the time, Jamie Reynolds was the youngest person to have ever been given a full life tariff. He was 23 years old and he is never going to be released from prison again. He doesn't have a minimum sentence absolutely no possibility of parole. George's family have since set up the Georgia Williams Trust which helps to fund outdoor activities for children because that was something that Georgia very much was into as a child, something she really believed in was expanding your horizons through outdoor activities, getting active and the Georgia Williams Trust as well as helping all these children has really helped her family as well to kind of get out of the house and get talking to people and carry on their lives. But yeah, that completes this case. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a thumbs up because that really helps me out. Subscribe down below if you want to see some more from me. Like I said, right now we're doing 10 days of terror on my channel, 10 days of consecutive true crime videos. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.